So I'm going to uh, demonstrate to you a series of experiments where you can find it from our lab workbook. Uh, experiment 4.1, 4.1 here, okay? And according to the menu, there are three parts, part A, B, C. So I will do it basically one by one. And while I'm doing this, I'm also going to highlight some key concepts and some of the things you have to pay attention to. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, safety goggles on. And the first thing we're gonna do is we are trying to study the action of heat on calcium carbonate. Okay, this is calcium carbonate. All right, so first of all, we are going to have three spatula measure of calcium carbonate. So it doesn't really have to be very accurate. One, two, and three. All right, that should do it. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. And then we need to uh, start, we need to light up a Bunsen burner. Turn it into a blue flame and what we're going to do next is to heat it okay heat it under the Bunsen flame now according to the menu we have to heat it for 15 minutes so yeah let's just heat it for 15 minutes and pay attention that I am doing this uh, swirling motion because that would make it heat more evenly that will prevent the cracking of the boiling tube. And I also make it tilted. Um, actually, this is not very necessary. We usually tilt the test tube while heating a solution because if the solution gets boiled, uh, it will shoot out. And if I tilt it, then at least the solution will not splash towards me or go up and then go down and then hit my hand, right? But here actually it's not necessary, but you know, this is the usual drill. Alright, let's just um, be patient and heat it for 15 minutes. And you know, what we are trying to do here is to do a thermal decomposition, thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate, and you will expect to have calcium oxide also known as the quick line, also carbon dioxide. Okay, these two you will expect to be the product. But you know calcium oxide or the quick line is a white solid. The calcium carbonate is also a white solid, so you don't really see any color change on the solid. And carbon dioxide, of course, is a colorless gas, so you won't expect to see any observable change. Now some students, when you, when, when you see carbon dioxide or any gas that is produced there, and you may think, oh, that should be colorless bubble. And especially during the exam, okay, you see gas is produced and you put down uh, colorless bubbles are given off in the experiment. But pay attention, right, when we talk about gas bubbles, we are talking about gas formed underwater, okay? But you see there are no water here, so how could you see gas bubble, right? So, be more authentic when it comes to observation, okay? Don't just memorize, okay? And yes, by the way, uh, this experiment is supposed to be uh, a group task. So, and you also, I also mentioned that there are altogether three parts. So, in reality, if you are doing this within your group, so while one of you are doing this boring stuff, uh, the other group mates should be doing part B and part C. So, treasure your time in real uh, laboratory exercise, okay? Okay, so uh, 10 minutes has passed, still got 5 minutes to go, but I think that should be more or less the same, okay? 
and plus we are not going to convert all the calcium carbonate into calcium oxide so um, it should be fine with just 10 minutes we don't have to really heat it for 15 minutes so now I should stop the heating All right, and the next step is we are going to add water into this uh, calcium oxide, all right? But of course, we will wait until it cools down. Otherwise, um, it may crack the very hot boiling tube. So let it cool down for a bit. Now you can see after I heat it, it is still a white solid, still a white solid, okay? So just let it cool down for a while. Now, I think it has cooled down already. So right now, what we are going to do is we're going to add some water into the calcium oxide and see what we can observe. So first, I'm going to add just a few drops. Now, when we add a few drops of water, you should be able to hear some hissing sound and you also see some steam coming out. Now, the reaction between the calcium oxide and water will produce slicked lime, calcium hydroxide, okay? And this reaction is highly exothermic. That means the reaction releases a lot of heat. So that's why you hear the hissing sound and you also see some steam coming off, okay? The reaction itself does not produce the steam, but the heat is hot enough, is enough to actually boil some of the water. And that's why you see some steam or water vapor condensed on the boiling tube surface, okay? So now we are going to add more water inside. So basically we want to dissolve as much calcium hydroxide as possible in order to make lime water, okay? So we basically add the water. So you see a very milky solution. Now the lime water is supposed to be colorless, but right now here, actually, we still got some calcium carbonate remain unreacted, and those calcium carbonate is insoluble in water, so the those milkiness, those white precipitate is actually the unreacted calcium carbonate just suspending around the solution. If we allow the solution to stand for a while, you should be able to see a lot of the solid sink at the bottom, but still we get some calcium carbonate suspending in the solution. Actually, if you watch a little bit closer, you already see a lot of uh, white precipitate already decanted at the bottom of the boiling tube. So right now we are going to do a filtration. We are going to do a filtration on this uh, lime water and calcium carbonate mixture. We want to get the colorless lime water out of it, okay? So we have this uh, filter funnel. Of course, we need to prepare ourselves a filter paper cone, okay? Remember how to fold it. We fold it into half, and then we fold it into a quarter. Then you open one of these pockets, you get yourself a paper cone, just like those you get it from the water dispenser, okay? Now, you put it into the cone, and in order to make the paper cone stick firmly to the inner wall, we must add some water. Okay, that should do it. Now the paper cone stick firmly to the inner wall. So we just pour a small amount of this liquid to the filter paper cone. 
And you can see the fill tray should be colorless and that one would be the lime water that we are looking for. So right now we are going to uh, do a chemical test to see uh, whether this liquid is indeed lime water. Now we often use lime water to test for the presence of carbon dioxide, right? And we know that carbon dioxide terms lime water milky. Now this time we do it another way around. Uh, we want to prove whether this one is lime water or not. So we will introduce carbon dioxide into this uh, lime water. So this is the, the lime water that we have collected. So we want to introduce carbon dioxide into it. And one of the very convenient way to get carbon dioxide is from our exhaled breath. It's from our breath. So what we're going to do is, we're going to take a straw. And basically we're going to blow the air, our exhaled breath, into the lime water. So if it turns milky, that means it is really the lime water. Now this one, pay attention, you don't, you don't suck it, you blow it and you blow it gently, otherwise it will spill out and it will be all over your face. It will be best if you tilt it <coughs> to the side, so, and then you gently uh, blow in the breath, okay? Okay, now it should be obvious that the lime water turns milky, so, that means this one is really lime water, all right? So that is the idea. Now, again, as a conclusion, what we did at the first place, we, first of all, we have the calcium carbonate and then we heat it using our Bunsen flame. And during this process, the calcium carbonate decomposes into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide, all right? Now the calcium oxide, once we introduce small amount of water, then the calcium oxide will react with the water to form calcium hydroxide. And this reaction is highly exothermic, that means it releases a lot of heat. So uh, you will hear some hissing sound and you also see some steam coming off, which condense in the inner wall of the test tube. Okay? Now, when we add excess amount of water into the calcium hydroxide, then the calcium hydroxide dissolves in water to form lime water. Now remember, lime water is a saturated solution of calcium hydroxide. Uh, because calcium hydroxide is not very soluble in water, so that's why just now we add a lot of water inside, the solution is still very milky, not only because um, the, we have some calcium carbonate remain unreacted and still there, but also perhaps we have too much calcium hydroxide inside, so they are not able to fully dissolve into the solution. So in order to get rid of that milkiness or get rid of that cloudiness, we perform a filtration and by doing filtration, we collect a clear filtrate and that one we suspect that it is lime water in order to test or verify whether that is really indeed the lime water, we will carry out this very convenient test, blow in our breath which contains carbon dioxide and you see now it turns milky meaning that it is indeed the lime water. Okay, so that one will be part A of the experiment 4.1. Now for part B, um, it's actually quite easy. What we're going to do is we try to study the action between calcium carbonate and water. Basically to see if the calcium carbonate dissolves in water or not. Actually, you already know the answer, but you know, let's, let's just have a look. So we just use a clean test tube. Now, I don't care, I just drop some calcium carbonate inside. Okay, anyway, so I got some calcium carbonate inside, right? And then I'm going to pour in some water and see uh, whether it dissolves or not. So let's introduce some water inside. So it turns into a milky uh, mixture and it looks like it doesn't dissolve. Let's just add more water inside. Okay, so calcium carbonate is insoluble in water.
All right? So that would be part B. Okay, so for part C, uh, it's an interesting one. Uh, we are going to actually study the action between acid and calcium carbonate. And we are using a two test tube setup, um, not only to see uh, how, the reaction, how the reaction between calcium carbonate and acid is going on, but we also try to test whether the reaction produces a carbon dioxide or not. Okay? Now, first of all, you need to have a test tube, and to that, we are going to add lime water. Okay, lime water. So, I just pour a healthy amount of it. Like that. Okay. And then, we will have a delivery tubing. Delivery tubing. Okay, so the longer end or the, the end without the stopper, we will insert it into the lime water, just like that. Okay, so remember this is lime water. Now, on the other hand, on another clean test tube, we will be adding some hydrochloric acid. Okay, again, pour a healthy amount of it. Okay, that should be enough. Now, here is a, the, the more technical part. What we're going to do next is we want to add some calcium carbonate to the test tube, but we don't want it to mix with the acid. So how do you do that? Well, the trick is you kind of tilt the test tube like this, and then you open up your calcium carbonate, Use a spatula. Just to add it to the side, to the side of the test tube. Okay. So let me look closer to you. So just add it here. But don't drop it. Try not to drop it. Just put it on the side like this. There we go. Okay, so this is how it looks like. We have the acid here, we have the calcium carbonate here. Now, we are going to take this test tube, again, this test tube on my, on my right, uh, it contains lime water, and right now I'm going to stopper the test tube with the calcium carbonate like this. Okay, make sure it's tightly sealed. So right now, you see this setup. So it consists of on my left, on my left, the calcium carbonate and the acid not yet mixed together. On my right, we have uh, the delivery tubing and the lime water. So right now, I'm going to drop the calcium carbonate into the acid and let's see what happens. Right now, the bubbling has stopped. Okay, so first of all, this one on, on my right, this is the lime water. Now it turns milky. So, what, did, what does it tell us? It tells us that carbon dioxide is produced it from the reaction between calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid, which turns the lime water milky. Okay, now on my left, so over here is the Perhaps I add too much of the calcium carbonate. You see more reaction occurs. And remember, this one we call it effervescence. Effervescence basically means bubbling. Okay, so I'm trying to react uh, the remaining carbonate that has stuck on the inner wall. Okay, so I allow it to stand for a while, and this is how it looks like. So on this side, on my left, your right, 
This one is the hydrochloric acid and the calcium carbonate. So even though there are still some milkiness or cloudiness inside, but in general, you don't see any white precipitate. So that actually means that calcium carbonate dissolves in hydrochloric acid. To be more precise, hydrochloric acid reacts with calcium carbonate. Okay. Now on my right hand side, on your left hand side, even though the solution is pretty clear at the top, but you can obviously see a lot of white precipitate. So that one is actually the calcium carbonate. Because if you remember, lime water, the reason why it turns milky when we bubble the carbon dioxide is that the carbon dioxide actually reacts with the lime water to form calcium carbonate. And calcium carbonate is insoluble in water. And that's why they exhibit as white precipitate. Okay, with insufficient with, with sufficient time, the white precipitate sinks to the bottom, and this is how it looks like. Okay, so that would be the end of this experiment.